Hi. Hi, Mark. How's it going? Good. <laughs> How come, why is it that every time we get to fish together, <laughs> we end up on Henry's Lake? I don't know. Must be some kind of natural vacuum. Must be. Or maybe it's giant fish and lots of them. Yeah. Huge hybrids. Your favorite, brook trout. And what Idaho is famous for, Yellowstone cutthroat. We're here on Henry's Lake in eastern Idaho, and we're on one heck of an adventure. Join us, won't you? This big fish adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. On today's show, Mark and I are excited to once again be fishing Henry's Lake. Our last trip was one of my most memorable Stillwater experiences. It was late fall. Temperatures were crisp, and the fishing proved spectacular. Every species came out to play. Brook trout, Yellowstone cutthroat, and the large hybrids Henry's is famous for, including one memorable 13-pound monster. This time around, we are fishing Henry's in early fall. Water temperatures are warmer than last time. The lake is on the tail end of its annual summer algae bloom, but Henry's Lake Trout should still be feeding as they switch into their annual fall feeding mode. One of the reasons Henry's is one of my favorite still waters to fish anywhere is it's so shallow. I believe the deepest spot when the lake's at full pool, maybe 18 feet. The rest of the lake is super shallow. So what does that mean? Well, it's a giant shoal. A shoal is any portion of the lake bottom that is actually, that sunlight actually hits. And what this does is it stimulates plant growth through photosynthesis, and of course provides great habitat for all the food sources these Henry's Lake hybrids, brookies, and cuts feed on. Henry's Lake, beautiful place to be. The scenery is spectacular, and this mother nature made one fantastic stillwater fishery. Bill, let's go through uh, the setups that we have here fishing Henry's Lake. Sure, it's fall. So we're gonna be spending a lot of the time fishing the shallows, probably less than 10 feet deep, even shallower, hopefully, that would be fun. So the first order of business is a floating line setup with a floating line designed for casting strike indicators. Indicator setups, excellent way to start the day when fish seem a bit slow and not willing to chase. Just hang something down there, a foot or two off the bottom, like a leech, bounce leech, and a perfect way to go. Yeah, so I've got the same rig for, um, for my bobber rig, um, but instead of Phil's six weight finesse rod, I'm using a five weight fly rod, nine foot, uh, with, a f with a floating line, and I've got a straight shot of 1x liter uh, material that uh, goes right to a balanced bruise leech for me. And then the next order would be something in the slow sinking line category. Um, this is uh, like yours, a five weight, a 10 footer. Uh, 10 foot rods are excellent for still waters, extend your reach. Um, this is a clear intermediate, so something that sinks anywhere from a hover at about one inch per second to clear intermediates about an inch and a half per second, stripping leeches, uh, small scuds, minnow patterns, those kind of things. So that's more of a finesse technique for what you're doing. Yeah. And then what I'm doing is I'm throwing the, the, you know, the kitchen sink at these guys. This is a six weight, uh, and I've got a type seven sink 
tip on this, which means it sinks at seven inches per second. So I'm counting down 10 to 15 seconds on my casts, and then I'm retrieving the, the, the strip into, and the fish are gonna tell me what they're looking for, a fast strip, a slow chronic crawl kind of thing. Um, and then I've got a uh, brown bead headed leech here followed by by nymph. Yeah. And lastly, uh, for fishing a little deeper and just covering through the water, this is a parabolic line. This line has three synchrates along its length. This has a, a front section that sinks at three inches per second, a mid section that sinks at five inches per second, and then the back section sinks at three inches per second. So what this does is, is gets the line to sweep through the water like so, and I've got maybe about a seven foot leader set up with a buoyant fly on the point, a booby, um, and in between that and the fly line, I've got a little minnow pattern. It could be a leech. The trick with this line is you want to be able to cast it as far as you can so you get all those three differing sink rates working to your advantage. It's an English technique called the washing line because the fly, the buoyant fly in conjunction with your line, helps support those middle droppers uh, like clothes on a washing line. Getting the fly where the fish are and letting them find it. They are hungry and they will eat. As there are little to no hatches during the fall season, our fly selection focused on bread and butter food sources such as leeches, bait fish, along with attractors. Some of our best producing patterns included the humongous, olive pumpkin balance leeches, micro leeches, scuds such as the soft tackle scud, various colored woolly buggers, and attractors such as boobies and fabs. All right, so I'm fishing a clear intermediate. This line sinks at about one and a half inches per second. We're working shallow water here. So what I'm doing is I'm making my cast as long as I can to cover as much water as I can. And I'm mentally counting down about 15 seconds, almost three feet. And then rod tip is right in the water. Start off with two quick strips. I make sure I'm tight, there's no slack in there. A pause, a couple of quick strips maybe. Long, slow pull. Tip is right in the water. So if I get a strike, I'm just gonna strip like this and pull that fly right into the corner of their mouth. Just fishing the single fly because we're pretty shallow with a fair amount of weed growth, little pockets, and sometimes that second fly, when you hook a fish, becomes a liability because it's going to hook weeds and could cause you to lose a fish. So, oh, energetic! There he is, Not the largest Henry's Lake fish, but got lots of growth left in him. This productive environment in which he lives, where she lives. Lots of food here to eat. Tons of scuds, damsels, leeches, baitfish, zooplankton, mayfly nymphs, calabatus. There we go. I'll put them in the net. Right near the end of the retrieve, I'm going to drop my hand and just slowly raise the rod and pause or hang the fly because fish will often follow. Just let it sit there for a second, check for no weeds, no fish following, and then repeat the process. You always want to fish the hang when stripping because fish love to follow. And then as you raise the rod to cast, your fly increases speed and changes direction. And that flips that switch in their head and they instinctively want to attack it. Here we go.
Bill, all the times I've fished Henry's Lake, I've never seen this algae. What is it? It's a great question, Mark. Algae is a, is a sign of a productive lake, and I think a lot of people think of it, looking at it on the surface, that it's green and ugly, but it's actually a good thing because it provides the trout with a sense of cover um, because it's essentially a plant, so it's going to be all gathered up near the surface, often less than 10 feet, less than 5 feet sometimes, because it's trying to photosynthesize up there. So during the summer months, and we've had a particularly warm summer down here in Idaho, it's been conducive to big algal blooms. But what's starting to happen now, as these nights cool, the water gets colder, the algae starts to clump up and then sink to the bottom or get washed into the shallows where it dissipates. So it's a good thing because it'll actually protect the fish, give them a sense of protection, dimmer light, they like to feed in that kind of stuff. And because it's absorbing some of the sun's energy, a lot of times the water underneath that algal cap is nice and cool, good oxygen content for feeding trout. Yep, Mark's in. Well done, Mark. That was really cool because I was watching my indicator and it was just going ever so, ever so gently. Yeah. And all of a sudden, boom, it went under. We got a fish on. Yeah, I got my gear in the way. All right. Awesome. There we go. I'll, I'll let you handle it, Phil. Okay. goes. Thank you for playing. Mark and I were fortunate enough to spend the morning with Idaho State biologist Nate Tillotson. Idaho State does an excellent job monitoring the pulse and overall health of Henry's Lake. During the fall months, electrofishing the small tributaries that flow into Henry's provides critical information on the relative health of the lake's brook trout and Yellowstone cutthroat. The information gathered, in part, helps the ongoing management and stocking practices of Henry's Lake. Together we were going to sample one of the small feeder creeks that flow into Henry's just to see how the trout are doing. These feeder creeks provide cool oxygenated water during the warm summer an ideal spawning habitat for the lake's Yellowstone cutthroat and brook trout. Juvenile trout also use these creeks as rearing habitat before venturing out into Henry's. As it was early fall there should be good numbers of brook trout to sample. Knowing Mark's love of brookies I knew it wouldn't take too much to convince him that this was going to be a great diversion. Mark and I were in for a memorable educational experience. How many times a year are you shocking? So it really depends on the tributary and it depends on what our goals of the survey are. Um, we, we shock several locations or we sample fish at several locations on the lake or in the tributaries with a variety of methods depending on what's going to be best for sampling fish and getting a representative sample of those fish in that location at that time. So is Henry's Lake today better than it was in sort of its historic <laughs> levels where it deemed its fame? So uh, interestingly enough there was a uh, study uh, done by a graduate student Darcy McCarrick who's now a biologist here with Fish and Game uh, and she was finding, or she found that uh, Yellowstone cutthroat trout in Henry's Lake are growing as fast or faster uh, than they have been ever historically. Well, let's get out there and All right, let's shock do it. some fish. All right, brief little safety talk here. Don't touch the water whenever the shocker's on. <laughs> um, and so if there was to be someone accidentally slip and fall in, just immediately everyone just start yelling off, off, off. And that tells me to let go of that little toggle right there yeah. and that'll stop shocking. All right, cool. y'all ready? Y'all ready. All right, no fingers in the water. All right. No leaky way. 
That's the sound we want to hear. We're shocking. Bucket's ready, man. So you'll see, see right there. There's our first little sum on into the day. <laughs> oh, yep. See, there's one coming down right there. There we go. There's a little juvenile brookie. Very possible that that one came from our stocking just last week. And so one thing you'll definitely want to hit is up under these cut banks right here. They can certainly be in there just like that little guy. Not a little brook trout. And so you'll kind of see me pushing in here and then pulling out. And so as we kind of talked about earlier, the fish will swim towards the anode. And so as I'm doing that, that's kind of pulling fish out of there if they're in there. Sometimes they will get tangled up in the underneath, underneath the willows and things though. Oh, here we go. You want to come net this? Oh yeah. Jackpot. You got another one down here. Is that one there? Yep. Oh, another nice one right there. All right, let's go ahead and dump those fish in the bucket. Another one down here by your feet. Holy. So there's another big one up under here. And there's several more smaller, smaller ones just right here. And then before I go any farther here, I'm going to give that to you. Oh, <laughs> here's some more. <laughs> nuts. <laughs> yep. So what we have to do is we can't stop shocking in the middle of a habitat type. So we've got to make it to the end of this pool, shock all the fish in it. Yeah. And then we'll move on and then we'll, we'll process these fish. So they're okay. not sitting in there too long. Holy. This is insane. I know. <laughs> Look at that. That's a fish they make stickers out of, Phil. <laughs> Let's stop there. Yeah. Okay, so if someone would like to take data or measure fish, one of y'all can do I'll either. Do that data, so can measure. There we go. Let's try. Okay. There. 365. And just put them back? And just, uh, yeah, put them back. Uh, 464. So Nathan, what's, I think what most people don't realize is, is just how critically important these small little creeks are, right? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, and that's the reason we've sunk so many dollars and, and, uh, and written so many grants for restoration projects of these small tributaries to Henry's Lake, because they really are so valuable. Yeah. As we saw in just this small stretch of uh, the stream right here, it can, they can hold incredible concentrations of trophy sized fish. Um, and then they provide excellent refuge for the juvenile fish throughout the first few months of their life up to a year and a half even okay. uh, before they go out to the lake and really start to grow. Uh, and so as they grow up here, uh, they can escape so getting up underneath these willow sections where they have got plenty of cover. They can escape predation from some of the larger fish. These small streams are incredibly important and I'm, I'm happy that uh, we're kind of spreading the word on, on how yeah. important they really are. We're fi finally starting to realize the value of them. Yeah, because that's why we spend so many dollars protecting these with uh, the riparian fence that we install all through here. So the cows it keeps, out. keeps the cattle out, uh, keeps the riparian area intact, uh, keeps the banks stable. They're they're incredible, incredible systems. So if Henry's Lake's the heart, this is the artery. And without the arteries, the heart can't function. The Yellowstone Teton region offers numerous accommodation options. However, when fishing Henry's Lake, it's tough to beat accommodations such as Jared's Wild Rose Ranch Resort, where the lakeshore is just a short walk away and you can moor your boat so it's ready to go whenever you want to hit the water. So the Wild Rose dates back to the mid-1800s. Uh, got the property then and uh, it's been around since then. Uh, the old, a lot of the old buildings are not here anymore, but 
some of the old cabins right behind me are. Um, but uh, we, uh, my dad got involved with this in the uh, mid 80s. And then we, me and my wife, I just got married in 96. And that's when we came up and uh, started running it for my dad. And then about 10 years ago, we started buying it and have been running it still ever since. So our accommodations are varied. We have uh, cabins, rooms, condos, uh, small units and big units. They'll range from two people to, we've got a 10 bed, 20 person unit. So we've got a large variety of sizes and, and shapes and, um, and that uh, is good for certain types of groups like reunions, but it also provides different families the option to stay here on the lake and, and as well as we have RVs and campsites. So we've got, uh, we've got a little mini store in the lodge. We've got uh, a restaurant, hot tub. Uh, we've got a marina on the lake. Uh, and on the lake, there's boat rentals. There's, uh, uh, you know, people can launch their boats. Obviously, it's a world-class fishing lake. This is a fisherman's paradise with uh, the Madison and the Gallatin being on one side and then all the the Idaho rivers, the Henry's Fork, and the, the outlet, and of course, fishing right on Henry's Lake. Uh, yeah, there's just fishing galore in this area. During our time on Henry's Lake, Mark and I were fortunate enough to be joined by ex-NFL player Brandon Baer. Brandon grew up in the Teton Valley area. Once he retired from the NFL, he returned home where he now lives with his family and enjoys all of the outdoor activities the region has to offer. Rather than focusing on football, Mark and I were looking forward to our time on the water with Brandon to get a better idea of what it was like growing up and now living in such a beautiful area of the world. So today we're, we're sitting on Henry's Lake near Island Park, Idaho. I'm uh, really excited to fish with Brandon Bear, former NFL player. Brandon grew up in this area, St. Anthony, just down the road. Fished a lot, lots, excuse me, fished a lot of river and streams, uh, but hasn't fished the lakes much, at least not in recent years. So I'm gonna, you know, take him out and uh, Show them a few tricks, hopefully, and get them into a few, uh, few fish, some brookies, perhaps, some cuts, and hopefully a big hybrid. The challenge with fall fishing is they, they, they'll go on, and for reasons only known to the trout, they'll go on a fe short feeding binge, and then they'll stop. And then they'll start again, and they'll stop. So you, you tend to spend long days and get these periods of excitement and happiness out, and then a lot of just waiting for the next binge. Whereas in the spring, because you have a lot of insect hatches, they're kind of constantly grazing because there's always something swimming by or emerging through the water at them. So it's just a little more patience game. So let's give it a shot. What do you want to do? We can, we can strip. We can uh, put things under an indicator and see if they want them that way. Well, what's going to be my best chance of catching a fish? Um, well, why don't we start with the indicator? Rig? Okay. All right. So the reason we like using indicators on lakes is because this indicator, lots of different types. I'm just using the twist lock one here. Um, it's, it controls the depth because in lakes, the depth of your presentation and the speed at which you move your fly are the two most important things, more than fly. You want to think depth, then retrieve and pattern. And the indicator um, allows you to control that depth because from as soon as the fly sinks and settles to you recast again, it's always at the same depth. Mm -hmm. We're just going to cast this out, let it sit there. It's a bit of a patience game. Some, you gotta find out what they like. This morning, I think, in these calm conditions, they're gonna like things just sitting still, move it once in a while. So give us a chance to talk and watch and take in this great scenery. Love it, love it. Strip this in, and I watched the indicator tap, 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 tap. And I was, That's kind of strange. <laughs> and I kept stripping, and then all of a sudden it pulled back, which is not quite the way we indicator fish, but we'll take it. Nice, beautiful Henry's Lake cutthroat. Thank you, my friend. Wow. Look at that thing. Got the balance leech right in the tip of the snout. See if we can 
Little like that. Let's give him some water a bit, cool him down. Okay. This barbless hook usually falls out. And I believe it did. Yeah, it's in the net, so he's got tip it all around him. A beautiful, whoa, beautiful Henry's Lake cutthroat. Cut, whoa! <laughs> Catch and release right there. See, he wanted to go home. <laughs> On, on this lake, I mean, it's, I've got fond memories of this spot ever since I can remember. Just, we scheduled our family reunions around opening fishing. You know, just coming up here in the spring, everybody uh, just get together, bring their own, bring their boats, their ATVs, whatever it was, any way to get to the shoreline. It's evolved over the years. But just, just grew up loving this place more than anything. It's fun to think about how the, the, lures and baits that we used evolved over the years to now I'm sitting with a fly rod on here, which is the first time I've ever fished with a fly rod out here. Um, and you've been able to be successful on here no matter what. Like every time I've come out here, we just catch fish. Um, but man, yeah, from the mountain range and, and uh, the proximity to Yellowstone and just being able to, you don't even need to go, if you're local, you don't need to go to Yellowstone to see animals. I think that's a big, everybody comes here to go up to Yellowstone and see all the animals. You could just drive down any of these roads and see just about all the same stuff. There we go. It's a strip from behind your hand. That's right. Ooh, hey. Yeah, yeah, and let them run. That's right. Good rod position. That's good. Or they like that water. So strip from behind your hand. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Real, real, yeah, fast as you can. All right. Yes. Well done, Brandon. Or just like that. Hey, hey, Well hey. done, Brandon. Look at that nice guy. Nice fish. I think that's a hybrid. Yeah, ate the bottom fly. Is that what he ate? No, he ate the upper. Upper fly. Yeah, so we'll get the flies out of the way. Uh-oh, we got a fish on. We got a fish on. All right, my friend, I'll let you do the honors. All right. Nice fish. It could be something. He's not that big, but he just had a big old head whip to him at first. He's done now. 
There we go. He's been cutting. Beautiful twice today. little cutty. <laughs> well done, Brandon. So, is this still water fly fishing a decent thing? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you, you, quick study. It's a, you've got so many good still waters around here. Here, I'll let you hold it up and. Here, big guy. Come visit me. Look at that fish. That yeah, beautiful Yellowstone cutthroat. Whoa. <laughs> Talking to us? Probably wants to go home. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, go ahead. There we go. Look at that. Well, hey. it's been a great day. Nice. Yeah, I, I hope you hope you get to love this still water. Come out and do this. You've got so many great still water resources here in Idaho. But uh, just a great way to spend a day in such beautiful, beautiful country. I got a feeling I'm going to be out here a lot more. Well, if you ever need uh, tips, advice, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll be only too happy to help. I'll even come down for a visit. <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. All right, my friend. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you. Where fishing multiple flies is allowed, the washing line is one of my favorite presentation techniques. Originating in Great Britain, the washing line uses a buoyant fly in the point, such as a booby or fab. Between the buoyant point fly, standard, non-buoyant flies, including bead heads, are suspended off the leader on separate droppers. So they hang like clothes off a washing line. This technique works with a variety of fly lines including floating to sinking and parabolic or sweep lines. This setup allows you to target specific levels where fish are feeding or work over weed tops allowing you to present your flies in the band of water between the surface and the weeds below. The washing line is a critical presentation technique that all still water fly fishers should learn and use whenever possible. Where are you going, dude? Where are you going? Oh, that's a little... Oh, that's a little big. Yay, skunks out of the boat, team. It's like a hybrid. There we go. Into the green. So I'm fishing what's called a washing line setup. So I've got this, um, just a small, it's called a Rickards Calabatus and Peacock, more scud-like, and then on the point, I've got what's called a fab, it's got a foam tail. So this floats up while the other, and helps suspend the other fly off a dropper like clothes off a washing line, that's why they call it that. Feels bigger? I think so. I, I spent up I... my retrieve on that, Phil. Nope, it's a it's a cutthroat. I'm not complaining. Nope. <laughs> They're definitely liking the strip so far. Yep. Nice fish. Yeah. They're all quality, aren't they? Yeah, they're beautiful. They're well fed. State fish, Idaho state fish. Oh, what a fish. Look at the cut on it. Yeah. Leech 
on the bottom. Olive balance leach, all pumpkins. Basically an all olive body with a little dubbing behind the gold bead, gold tungsten bead. So Mark, we had been stripping earlier and it's gone Aaron knows it's uncharacteristically in this valley flat calm. So we went back to hanging things under indicators. And there you've got that leech, typical indicator hook. Right hook, in the tip of the nose. Right in the tip of the snout. Well, I'll tell you one thing for free. Henry's Lake never disappoints. Never. We had an amazing trip here, fishing with Brandon, electro fishing. Yeah, Kevin at the Wild Rose were putting us up right on the lake shore. Nothing better than uh, just getting up, walking down to the dock and taking off and going fishing. Absolutely, the fishing was fantastic. Yeah, lots of cuts. So all the brookies on the electro fishing. <laughs> Not the way I know you wanted to catch no, no, them, but okay, I, think no. you, I think you thoroughly enjoyed yourself I there. Do. I did. And we got a few hybrids, but nothing big, but we know they're there. Yes. And this, if you're a still water fly fisher or you wanna be, this is where you need to come because the fall season is just gonna get better and better and better as the water temperatures cool, stimulates fish feeding activity. They gotta stock up to get through the winter ahead. And as long as you can tolerate that cold, there's a real good chance you're gonna hook a fish of a lifetime. Absolutely. We hope you enjoyed today's show, learned a little bit more about stillwater fly fishing, Henry's Lake, and beautiful Idaho. For more information on this show and others in our informative series, please visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.